Good evening, welcome to ITV News. This is Monday night's calendar. Yes, hello, good evening. Here are tonight's main stories. An inquest hears how probation services classed Damien Bendel as a low risk of serious harm before he went on to murder three children and his partner. The grandmother of two of the murdered children said they told her they were scared of monsters. She told them there was no such thing as monsters. Now she says, how wrong could I be? Also tonight, enough is enough. After a four-year campaign, residents finally get traffic lights at this Bradford Zebra Crossing, dubbed the worst in Britain. It's feeling like we won the lottery for our community as well. The community are so happy that the crossing is getting taken away and the lights are getting put in. What now for the Leeds Warrior? Could this bruising knockout sound the final bell on Josh Warrington's career? We'll hear from the man himself a little later. And from Yorkshire's finest to the pride of Britain, how this brave, big-hearted and simply extraordinary bunch cleaned up at this year's National Awards. So first tonight, an inquest has begun into how a boyfriend classed by probation officials as posing a low risk of serious harm went on to murder three children and his partner in a horrific and prolonged hammer attack. Damien Bendel was described as quite psychopathic by one probation officer, but he was free to murder his partner Terry, her two children aged 11 and 13, and an 11-year-old girl who was on a sleepover at the family home at Killermarsh near Sheffield. Well, John Hill has been at Chesterfield Coroner's Court, and John, a truly dreadful case. It's awful, Sally, and I suppose over the next few days, these hearings may find out whether there were missed opportunities for the authorities to intervene in some way, an intervention which could have spared Damien Bendel's victims their fate. It is actually just over two years since these events unfolded and today we heard the harrowing impact on the victims' loved ones. 32-year-old Bendel used a claw hammer to kill his partner Terry Harris and her children, 11-year-old Lacey and 13-year-old John Paul. He also killed Lacey's friend, 11-year-old Connie Gent, who was on a, a sleepover at the house. And today we heard from the grandmother of Lacey and John Paul, uh, a lady called Angela Smith. She's seen here wearing all black. And in a statement to the police, she said that the children had once said to her that they were afraid of monsters. Well, she'd said to them, there's no such thing as monsters. But in a statement read to the inquest, she said, how wrong could I be? A monster wiped out my family. It's a truly shocking story, John. And what have we learned about Damien Bendel and the possible red flags about his behaviour before the killings? Well, Bendel was jailed for life, for the rest of his life, last December. Uh, but it's perhaps worth just looking at the moment of his arrest, the matter-of-fact way in which he says to his arresting officers as he's carried out the murders. This is the body cam footage from the time. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened. How oh, have, have you done something to anyone else? Yeah. What have you done? I've murdered four people. Well, Bendel was a man with a history of violence. He was a robber. He'd also attacked prison officers. There was a history of domestic violence. He'd even come onto the radar of counter-terrorism police because of his extreme right-wing views. One probation officer described him as cold and calculated, quite psychopathic, and yet he was classed by the probation service as of a low risk of serious harm to partners and children. That classification will come under intense scrutiny during the course of these hearings. The actions of the probation service, the actions of all the authorities will be the focus of that scrutiny over the next few days. John Hill live in Chesterfield. Thank you. Next, what's been dubbed Britain's most dangerous crossing and a victory for those who've been campaigning to make it safer. Yes, several people, including children, have cheated death on the zebra crossing on Horton Grange Road in Bradford. Now, a long campaign by Tahir Zeb, who lives alongside the crossing, has been successful and the installation of lights has started. Katie Oscross report starts with images of those near misses. Luckily, nobody was seriously injured. It should be the safest place to cross, but this woman unwittingly takes her life in her hands. She wasn't badly hurt, but this incident was one of many captured on Tahir Zeb's CCTV camera, which he installed to prove this crossing is dangerous. Since I've had that over five, six years now, and there's been so many mishits and 
four kids got knocked down on that zebra crossing. It's a very busy road. We have two schools here. We're just up the road here. In the morning, it is so busy. Another near miss. Again, incredibly, no real harm done. Tahir's cameras follow every move across the road outside his house, even his own. And finally, over the weekend, they captured this. Work to install lights has now started, but many people who live in this area believe they should have been listened to long before now about the dangers of crossing this road. Yesterday I was crossing the road, that side the uh, car never stopped, and this side they did, and I was walking in the middle of the road. My daughter do go to Houghton Lynch Primary. I'd rather walk all across the field and go towards that and, and then cross from traffic light than here. There's no light, it's too dark this end. So somebody's crossing at night, you can never see them. Do you find it quite a dangerous road to cross yeah, then? Yeah, because I'm with a kid, so it's uh, really dangerous somehow. It's a good college from here, so yeah. And you have to watch what you're doing on here. It is yeah, it's really dangerous. The success of Tahir's campaign should make this a safe place to cross. It's feeling like we won the lottery for our community as well. The community are so happy that the, the, the black crossing is getting taken away and the lights are getting put in there now. They should have taken this on board when we start doing the campaigning from the day one. Bradford Council said the scheme was made a priority and work should be complete by early November. 24-7, this road is so busy. Tahir's camera will remain until a crossing with lights is up and running. He hopes it won't record scenes like this one ever again. Katie Oscroft, ITV News, Bradford. Do stay with us. Still to come on tonight's calendar, special recognition for a special family. Rob, Lindsay and Kev are honoured at the Pride of Britain Awards. And the bees providing the feel-good factor in South Yorkshire, making the most of the last little bits of the heather. But how long is the mild weather going to last? All the detail you forecast a little later on. Now, party conference season continues, and this week it's the turn of the Labour Party in Liverpool. Speaking today was Leeds MP Rachel Reeves, who outlined the Labour Party's vision for growth. Speaking to a packed auditorium, the Shadow Chancellor said Labour's defining economic mission was to restore growth to Britain by cutting wasteful government spending and backing big infrastructure. Our political correspondent Charon Preet Carer reports. As the polls reassure members that this party is growing in popularity, Labour wants to reassure the public it can grow the economy. Conference, the choice at the next election is this. Five more years of the Tory chaos and uncertainty which has left working people worse off. Or a changed Labour Party offering stability, investment and economic security so that working people are better off. On the main stage of Labour's party conference, the Shadow Chancellor promised to back big infrastructure. A short walk away at a fringe event about levelling up Yorkshire. That begs the question, would Labour get flights off the ground in Doncaster? Could one of those projects be Doncaster's airport? I'd like to think we'll be able to get there sooner, so hopefully that shouldn't be part of the regional problem. We should be able to deliver that solution out Optimism from Oliver Coppard about the short term, matched by the Selby and Ainsty MPs' pride in Labour's long-term strategy. Labour's existing plans are really going to benefit and increase their ability to do business in Yorkshire and the Humber, whether that's reforms to the apprenticeship levy, which can give workers the skills they need, or reforming an archaic system of business rates. The Labour Party is attuned to the main concerns that business have, and we've got a credible plan to be able to address those issues. How persuasive do you think that plan will be for the everyday voter? I think it will be very convincing. It shows that Labour it wants to work in partnership with business to achieve that economic growth that we so desperately need. At a reception for Yorkshire last night, members agreed that the Shadow Chancellor's vision for growth was key to keeping Labour's lead. I'm just so delighted because it, it just feels really bold and bright and, and ballsy actually. I mean, it's like people are really going for it. As Labour, you know, we might be 21 points ahead in the polls. We need to treat it as if we aren't. Um, we need to be out on the doorsteps talking to voters and listening to people uh, and seeing what the opinion is and making sure that we match that. We are putting forward our really positive vision to give Britain its future back. We'll find out if a Labour government is part of that future at the next general election. 
Here in Liverpool, a party preparing for that possibility. John Breath Cadder, ITV News, Liverpool. Now, as tomorrow marks World Mental Health Day, figures show men in the UK are three times more likely to take their own lives than women. And a deeper look into those numbers has found that the situation is even worse for men working in construction. Yes, statistics show that two people in the industry take their own lives every single working day. Rahim Rashid reports on the fight to tackle mental health stigmas within that industry. While construction workers build things up, the toll of the job can often knock them down, with suicide rates in the industry around double the male national average. One worker in Pontefract says he's not surprised. You get a lot of people working away, working long hours uh, in construction. It can be quite lonely staying in hotels on your own. Um, it kind of brings in a drinking drugs culture. Uh, people working away a long time and if you are going through a bad time that being away from your support network and your family of friends it can just exasperate how you're feeling. It's something that's been highlighted at trade exhibitions up and down the country. Worrying figures from the Office for National Statistics show 15% of all suicides in 2021 were by those working in the skilled trades. Former apprentice star Michaela Wayne, who runs her own construction firm, says the industry needs to do more to tackle mental health stigma. This has to be addressed head on. Some of the reasons are this societal perceptions of this masculine environment and keeping up with this strong masculinity on site. I think we have a lack of understanding of mental health. We're around 40% of employers within the construction industry actually don't even have a mental health policy. Workers are turning to charities like the Lighthouse Club for help. It's now receiving more than 400 calls a month from families within the construction industry who are in crisis. We offer uh, emotional support, physical support and financial support to anybody in the industry and we do that through a 24-7 helpline, uh, we do it through a text back service, uh, we do it through education programmes and that programme alone in the last six months we've seen over 30,000 workers on site and the key thing that I'm so delighted about, we've had 125 people come to us who have had suicidal thoughts and we've got them immediately into counselling and are still with us today. On World Mental Health Day, the charity is calling on all construction workers to carry out a five-minute mental health check-in in the hopes that a quick check on a mate can help in the industry's battle against suicide. Raheem Rashid, ITV News. And if you want to find out more information or get support about the issues raised in that report, you can head to the Britain Get Talking website. That's itv.com forward slash Britain Get Talking. OK, it's time to look back on the weekend sport now. Zero Accounting Software. Sponsors ITV Regional Sports Report. And it's Monday, so Chris is with us. But, uh, Chris, on Saturday night, you're in a somewhat uh, rowdier arena. Ah, you, well, you could say that, Sally. It sometimes gets quite lively in here, it doesn't it? Do. But <laughs> you're right, yeah, I was in Sheffield for the boxing. Sadly, it wasn't to be for Leeds' Josh Warrington in his bid to become a three-time world champion. Josh actually looked in, in great shape. I think everyone had him winning most, if not every round, up until the seventh when he was caught with a real... Sucker punch from champion Lee Wood, the referee stopping the fight, much to Josh's frustration. The question is, what now? I, I just know that I've, I've still got plenty in the tank, you know, I've still got enough. There's never a, a part in there when I thought to myself, nah, it's, it's too far now, Josh, let, let it go. Not to be tonight, but hopefully Steve and Edward will have a chat to give and, you know, if not the rematch, offer me something else. Meanwhile, on the same bill, Denneby's Terry Harper retained her WBA light middleweight title but failed to land the WBO belt after being held to a majority draw with Cecilia Brookhouse. Elsewhere on Saturday, Leeds are up to fifth in the championship after a 2-1 win over Bristol City. A great finish from Jordan Hoogle and Rotherham, a good point at Southampton. And Sheffield Wednesday are still searching for their first win of the season after a goalless draw with Huddersfield. 
John McAtee scored a late winner for Barnsley at Exeter in League One, but the real drama came on the way home when the Barnsley team bus caught fire. Thankfully, everyone had already been safely evacuated. In League Two, local lad Bobby Poynton scored his first senior goal as managerless Bradford beat Swindon 1 0. Harrogate's decent form continued with a 2 1 win at Newport, and Mansfield's unbeaten start to the season remains, but only just sorry. We meant to have the right goals there, we didn't have the right goals, we apologise for that. Now, Sheffield United women played their first game since the death of vice captain Maddie Cusack. There were emotional scenes before kick off as players and fans paid tribute to Maddie, and they were honoured in her memory in the perfect way on the pitch with a 3-1 win over London City. Now over 5,000 fans were at Glanford Park on Saturday to celebrate what they hope will be a new dawn for Scunthorpe United. It was feared that this would be the final game at their home of 35 years, but a takeover of the club last week has given the fans belief that they can start climbing the leads. Arif Ahmed was there for us. Marching on Glanford Park, hundreds of Scunthorpe United fans took part in a celebration walk after a difficult few months that threatened the club's entire existence. Supporters showed their love for the iron as strong as it's ever been. Well, what does Scunthorpe United mean to you guys? It's our community, our home, home town. It's part of the life. Um, it's part of your board. You know, 50 odd years, isn't it? Yeah, Both of us. Yeah. Uh, Just started following them 35 years ago. Just fell in love with it and yeah just love coming it's like home i've been coming with my dad since i was tiny and i hated the thought of having children in the future that i couldn't bring down to the football on the weekend iron, iron. on wednesday local businesswoman michelle harness secured the club's long-term future by taking over from david hilton but if glanford park will remain their home remains to be seen it's our home it's where we live it's where we come to just decompress every weekend it means so much to everybody here myself my children and my grandchildren. This, this, this is everything, you know, my grandchildren only know this and it's, it's everything, really. Andy Key made the 14-hour, five-and-a-half-thousand-mile trip from South Korea. If it is to be the Irons' last game here, he was determined not to miss it. Why did you feel that you wanted to be here today? Um, I was so sad and I have to uh, decide to the club because as often, all I can do is just... Uh, support with the iron with any um, any thought just uh, or I can do for the club is I support United yeah thousands of fans were singing their hearts out on the terraces 45 minutes before their game with Brackley and just before kickoff they were introduced to the new owner please welcome your new owner Michelle And they were told that positive talks were ongoing about staying at Glanford Park. The actual match was almost immaterial on Saturday, but Jacob Butterfield ensured the new era got off to a winning start. Good win, I'm really happy. We've got our club back. Thank you to Michelle and everyone that's helped. And up the iron, hopefully we can do hopefully we get some more wins in. Been a pretty tough week. Well, probably longer than a week, but. Yeah, to see them all turn out today, to see it, you know, finally over and done with and we can move on, it's brilliant. There's been some dark clouds hanging over this club, but now the sun appears to be shining on Scunthorpe. Arif Ahmed, ITV News. So good times ahead for Scunny, hopefully, uh, Chris, and also things looking up for Rugby League in York. Yeah, they really are, Sally. Yeah, the York Valkyrie won their first ever Super League title yesterday with a 16-6 win over the Leeds Rhinos. Lacey Owen's second half try effectively sealed the win in front of 4,547 people, a record for the women's grand final. It earned York revenge for their defeat to Leeds in last year's final. We had a bit of a monkey on our back of playing Leeds in playoff games. We could seem to beat them in the league, but then never in a never in a big game. And that's that's me as a coach, and that's probably seven or eight of the players as well. So to do that today is 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 immense. But hopefully now we've learned how to do it, we'll uh, be able to keep doing it. Finally, from me, well done to Matt Fitzpatrick, Sheffield golfer, winning the Alfred Dunhill Lynx Championship today. And apologies once again for those pictures. That we'll let you off, Chris. Sorry. Just this once. Thank you very You're much welcome. indeed. And uh, in one seamless move from one side of the studio to the other, Hiya. Kerry joins us. <laughs>
Kerry. Warm is the weather word. Isn't it just? Yeah, I hope you all had a really nice weekend. I mean, we struggled with cloud amounts at times, didn't we, from the north and the east. But yes, those temperatures well above the average for the time of year. And this morning, actually, we had a bit of cloud around. We had a, a front to the north and east. So it was quite brooding in Bridlington, first thing. A big thank you to Gavin Shoesmith, looking north there up the coastline. And a little further north in Whitby, there was even some sea fret mixed in with the sunshine. A big thank you to Wendy Stockdale for sharing that. But the waters were a lot calmer further west into the afternoon because those winds really did drop out. Despite a little bit of high cloud, very calm, very warm, says Di Bagliani of this shot near Meltham. A big thank you for sharing weather photos at itv.com and a little further south into the Hope Valley Derbyshire looking like autumn but yes feeling like summer into the low 20s and yes the low cloud did lift and give us a decent amount of sunshine so it wasn't too bad at all today in fact a little bit better and a little bit warmer. Indeed so what's the future looking like in the near yeah, future? Yeah it's a little bit different for this week and certainly over the next few days so today Sheffield was one of our highest top spots 23 Celsius we'd expect 15 14 15 for the time of year that's what we'll get by the time we reach Thursday. Today, high pressure to the south of the UK, feeding in those warm conditions, but we do have fronts coming through from the northwest and also so from the southwest as we head through into Wednesday. And behind that, certainly for northern parts, it's going to feel a lot fresher by Thursday for sure. Well, we can't really complain. It is October after all, isn't exactly it? Exactly that, yeah. <laughs> Kerry, thanks very much indeed for now. It's a night like no other. The Daily Mirror Pride of Britain Awards was held in London last night and remarkable and often courageous people from across the calendar region did us proud. Didn't they, Just This was the event at which celebrities stepped back from centre stage to honour the often unsung heroes who raise millions of pounds to help others and who've often come through personal adversity themselves to achieve their goals. Wesley Smith tells us more. Meet John Burkill, who most people in Sheffield know never goes anywhere without his pram. Not even a glittering star-studded award ceremony at London's Grosvenor House Hotel, where he made a new friend, Strictly star Angela Rippon. I wanted to come unless I took my pram. And I told our fundraising money, I said, I'm not, I'm not going to know thing without my pram, because that's me. John's 84 now and has raised more than a million pounds for the cancer charity Macmillan, following the death of his wife 30 years ago. Now his fame goes beyond his hometown as he takes his overall ITV regional fundraising Pride of Britain award. I was on the end of the red carpet and there John was with his pram and just trying to get money out of people as they were getting out of their taxis before they went up the red carpet. Star name after star name graced the red carpet ahead of the ceremony, all eager to underline their support for the Pride of Britain heroes. The spotlight is going to be shone on ordinary members of the public who show humanity at its best. Bizarre, we're meeting people who've done absolutely amazing things and all we do is ponce around on telly and they all, <laughs> they all want their pictures taken with us. It's not about the celebs or the people to turn up, it's about the winners and I think creating this atmosphere and this environment for them is just super special. It was all clearly a whirlwind experience and definitely a night Jack Rigby will always remember as he was presented with the award for Young Fundraiser of the Year. Jack, who's from Halifax, is the son of the murdered soldier Lee Rigby. The 12-year-old has raised more than £50,000 for the military bereavement charity Scotty's Little Soldiers. Like a dream, it feels incredible. I feel so honoured to be able to have this award. The 17th of January 2019 is a night John Rastrick from Chesterfield will never forget. He was driving his lorry along the M1 when he saw a car in flames on the road ahead. He jumped out, fought the flames and intense heat and rescued the driver, Parry Mystery. You see it all on the dash cam, so uh, the film, and literally seconds later the whole car exploded. So, And John has said, right, crack on. I think about it a lot, yes, and, and I'm so pleased that I was there that night. And Leeds Rhino star Rob Burrow, MBE, along with his wife Lindsay and former teammate Kevin Sinfield, earned special recognition at the awards. It's a bit of a pinch me moment, I think really, you know, we've grown up watching Pride of Britain, so to be here and to receive an award is just a day that we will ne we'll never forget. All in all, the Pride of Britain Awards is perhaps a moment for us all to stop, appreciate and honour ordinary people living among us whose courage, determination and big hearts can achieve truly great things. Wesley Smith, ITV News. And you can watch the Daily Mirror Pride of Britain Awards on ITV1 on Thursday evening at 8 o'clock. I must just say hello to everyone I met on Saturday night at Pontefract Town Hall for 150 years of Crofton Silver Band. It was great to be with you. Here's Kerry.
good visibility on the horizon. Tui sponsors ITV Yorkshire Weather. Hello again. It's fairly decent today, especially in those sunny spells and things are really looking autumnal now, despite the cloudier skies further north and east during the first part of the day. Some beautiful scenes, some low cloud over the Pennines too, but a great one across looking towards Digley. A big thank you for your photos, weather photos at ITV.com. So despite that weather front and quite a lot of cloud down the Pennines, further south and east, the brighter skies and the temperatures into the low 20s Celsius. And overnight tonight starts off warm and clear but cloud will build some low cloud hugging the hills once more as we head towards the early hours we stay mostly dry though but with that cloud cover and the light winds the temperatures stay well up 15 or 16 for towns and cities potentially very sun times as we head into tomorrow 724 and 622 a mostly dry start but quite a bit of cloud around maybe a fleeting shower across parts of north yorkshire and then into the afternoon for a time bright breezy and warm but then we do have showers threatening from the north and west towards the late afternoon early evening time but in those brighter spells temperatures low 20 celsius so then we've got this little feature coming through and then another front coming through as we head into the early hours of wednesday meeting another front from the southwest bit of a question mark about where that system sits but where it does it will bring some outbreaks of rain could be heavy and fairly prolonged but further north drier clearer and starting to become a lot colder. So Wednesday is unsettled. Temperatures certainly by Thursday down to the average by day and by night with light winds. Dry and bright for most of us on Thursday, but further rain threatens by the end of the week. Tui sponsors ITV Yorkshire Weather. There you go. Definitely more of a mixture from tomorrow evening onwards. Well, sure. we shall make the most of it while we can. Kerry, thanks very much indeed. Yeah, nice to have a star-studded edition of Calendar tonight. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow at six. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.